Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antioch and Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Sunday, February 20th, 2022. We hear the readings for today. The first reading is from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 6, verses 12 through 20. Brethren, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food. And God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for immort- immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall they therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Certainly not. Do you not know that he who joins himself to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two shall become one flesh. But he who is united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun immorality. Every other sin which a man commits is outside the body. But the immoral man sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God? You are not your own. You were bought for a price. So glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which belongs to God. And today's Gospel reading is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. The Lord said this parable. There was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that falls to me. And he divided his living between them. Not many days later, the young son gathered all he had and took his journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in loose living. And when he had spent everything, a great famine arose in that country, and he began to be in want. So he went and joined himself to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his belly with the pods that the swine ate. No one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, but I will perish here with hunger? I will arise, and I will go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet at a distance, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to make merry. Now his elder son was in the field and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this meant. And he said to him, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has received him safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him, but he answered his father, Lo, these many days I have served you, and I have never disobeyed your command. And yet you gave me, never gave me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your living with harlots, you killed for him the fatted calf, he said to him. Son, you are always with me. And all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. And continuing now with the prologue from Ochred on the hymn of praise is for St. Sadok. What is the sun, the eye that does not see? What is fire, a servant without reason? Emperor Saper to Sadok speaks. Worship the sun and the flame and the gods which rule this world, according to the teaching of Zoroaster, Zoroaster the wise. Sadok to the emperor gently replied, To you, emperor, be health and joy. But where does the sensible before the senseless bow down? Where does the corporeal, the incorporeal, glorify? The sun, a beautiful thing as, uh, beautiful as a thing of God, the flame wonderful as a servant of men. But can the created, the creator replace? Can the dead a replacement for the living be? 
than the artist is a painting better than the plower is the plower plow made more costly more costly in the heavens of emperor there is only one god omnipotent intelligent beautiful and good of the invisible and visible world the creator of everything created the designer of all good gifts he is the giver a lover of mankind and almighty him the only begotten son revealed from the persian errors he saved us on top of nature he taught us to stand and toward the creator to turn our face to uplift heaven our entire soul there where our homeland is of angels and men the homeland Zadok spoke and Saper beheaded him. Today's reflection. Water is finer than earth. Fire is finer than water. Air is finer than fire. Electricity finer than air. Nevertheless, air is a dense element in comparison to the spiritual world. And electricity is a dense element in compared to the spiritual world. Electricity is very fine, but the voice is finer. than electricity, the thought finer than the voice, the spirit finer than thoughts, the air is fine and it carries the voice over a great distance, electricity is fine and it carries light over a great distance, nevertheless how much more is every deed, every word and every thought of yours carried to all the ends of the spiritual world. Oh, how awesome it is to commit sinful deeds and to speak sinful words and to think insane thoughts. To what immeasurable distances are amassed from that on the waves of the spiritual sea. But do not go into the details of the unknown world. The main thing is that you know that you measure how to measure how all of your deeds, words, and thoughts unavoidably create an impression on all four sides, on God and the spiritual world, on nature, on men, and on your soul. If you train yourself in this knowledge, you will attain a higher level of saving vigilance. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. And finally, with the contemplation we have, to our Lord Jesus Christ in conversation with Nicodemus, see St. John chapter 3. How Nicodemus, even though a teacher in Israel, did not perfectly comprehend spiritual things. How our Lord intentionally begins a conversation with the question of spiritual birth, a question most inaccessible to the mind of Nicodemus, that by this to bring Nicodemus to meekness, and after that to further cultivate him as a good field. And finally, how in the beginning Nicodemus with hesitation and shyness approached Christ. Even today, most of our scholars do that, and afterwards more boldly. And may God bless and keep you and those that you love today and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you have a great day, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.